Actually, I'm very proud of Robert today. It's been very exciting and it's been a nice visit. And today's ceremony has been really, really nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the swearing-in ceremony for the 16th Legislative Assembly. This is also obviously a very special day uh, for the members elect of the 16th Legislative Assembly. They've been working very hard both during the election for the last month or so and uh, during the last week getting ready for this day when they officially take their uh, duties and responsibilities of office. And to please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by our very own Daniel. There was an uh, election coming up for a new MLA for New Twin Lakes. I had a couple of people ask me, you know, you should put your name forward. And I thought, you nuts, I'm not going to run for MLA. And then a couple more people mentioned it, so I thought maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. And growing up in Inuvik and that, I, you know, I, I know the history of Inuvik. I grew up there. I lived through the first boom and the first bust, and I lived there when CFS was there and both hostels were running. So I knew the history. I grew up there. I knew the issues. I knew a lot of problems Inuvik was facing. I knew a lot of problems that the youth were facing. So I thought I, I, thought I can offer something. So I decided to... Uh, take a run at being the MLA for New Twin Lakes. You know, I've, I've done two and a half, almost three years in the assembly until uh, this year. And that, um, I think my performance in the assembly in those three years helped me get over the top in this one because people have seen that, you know, I, I wasn't afraid to come down, pound the table, get their issues heard, say what I had to say because that's what people want you to say. You know, a lot of people just think things, and, and but a lot of people appreciated the way I came down and just said whatever people in Newark were thinking. And I would like to ask the 19 members elect to remain standing, and I will administer the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. Oh, very proud of him. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's really happy and excited. Yeah. It's so overwhelming right now, like I have tears in my eyes when I watch my son get uh, sworn in. It's, um, I n never thought the years would pass so quickly. <laughs> I'm welcoming the duly elected, duly sworn members of the 16th Legislative Assembly. excited um, looking forward to serving the people of uh, my constituency on the Nutput and um, the Northwest Territories as a whole. People know I'm a hard-working individual in anything that I do. I try to do the best and I try to serve the people as much as I could. Housing is a big issue in the Nutput. Um, transportation, uh, groceries, nursing staff, uh, policing in uh, Saks Harbor. There's uh, there's so many others that you know I'm going to take on to a, a, on to a head now and, and move forward with them and making sure we're getting things done. You feel like you're in a fishbowl. You don't get to go anywhere. You're in, everybody thinks you're in Yellowknife, but actually you're at the Legislative Assembly. That's a whole different world on its own. Yeah, just a different lifestyle. I'm not used to suit and tie. Yeah. It's been a big learning curve, um, you know, because my life is on this sheet of paper right here. Uh, 
all the colored in dates that I'm supposed to be somewhere. So, <laughs> yeah. Usually it's two sided. They already have stuff for you for next year already. You're not even there yet. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm in my office, uh, probably in my tuck office, you see it's so small, but we're lean and mean and we're efficient here with my assistant Donna, she's been really helpful. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll get a chance that we could uh, good sit down and, and um, go over that, uh, you know, that uh, business of the opportunity for the professional building, housing to see what you wanted to do with that and um could you maybe um could you find out and give me a call back bob because before i make this call i'd like to have all my information to bring forward so i just checked in with i yeah. once uh once or twice a week i phone out uh, to the communities to my mayors and make sure everything's going well in the community and if they need any of my assistance and um then we just uh any problems come up i I make the proper call and we try to get it resolved as quick as we possibly can. Okay. For the health center, if there's any uh, spare apartments, to see if we could get them, you know, uh, temporarily given to the teachers. So the minister, we went in last time and, and we uh, did the community tour because your housing is such an issue, big issue in my riding. Uh, we have so shortage of housing. We have uh, different issues, black mold. Oh, good to good see you. Good Long good time, good huh? Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. so, everything going good? And I uh, just want to make sure that he's seen it firsthand. He heard it from the people, and it's not just myself. Burger, Burger. sorry. <coughs> and uh, Jackie Jacobson, are uh, you? For assessments. Is that the one you see? Hope so. This, the bottom line, is just uh, making the ministers and uh, the premier accountable to the people and giving access, giving my people access to them through me. I got housing house. I don't pay rent. There's people with uh, jobs, they're paying for my rent. I agree. I mean, it's, it, and it's a government policy that... We're here to serve you. I mean, I tried to bring it down a level where my people have access to the ministers and that could say their peace and they're happy with that you know and uh, it's not just myself doing it it's um, just uh, anybody that uh, wants to take the time and to talk to a minister I try to set it up and then we could go from there it's just bringing it uh, bringing it more open and not uh, it's not them and us it's us as a whole you know to work together It was all positive, you know, he assured them that, you know, things will get done and I, I have faith in my minister to, to work with us to, to get it done, so, and uh, go from there, we'll see, yeah. <laughs>Biggest thing right now is my access road 177. Um, uh, that's the big thing for me right now for Tuck alone, which will give my community a new water source, a new dump site, a new graveyard, um, gravel for my community because we can't build any houses in the community uh, due to shortage of gravel and uh, the monies that we did get prior past governments. It wasn't enough to yeah. to do a lot. Um, you get into the harbor, we're deep already. Yeah, because if we could all roll it into one, one package, uh, you know, then you get 177 going and then we could get this deep sea port going and then if it was approved to, to make Tuck a deep sea port, we're going to open up the whole harbor here. We're going to be able, if we um, get the approval, we'll be able to uh, bring in um, deep uh, draft uh, ships and to uh, service our community better not with uh, the products that we could come over the top then it's not just up the up the Mackenzie so it opens a lot of doors for everybody uh, cheaper fuel hopefully uh, food transportation's key living up here in the north and then and um, that's the biggest cost basically is this the transportation of getting it from the south 
to the north. We always um, try to um, lead the way in regards to for our community instead of being told what to do. We like to bring the business to Tuck because this is where all the oil and gas is. And, and uh, I think if we open up our community to that, it's going to bring jobs. It's just going to be better for, uh, better for the community and, and keeping people busy. People are happy. Feed your kids. Yeah, this is where it all starts. All the oil and gas will be flowing south from here. This is the this is the this is the going to be the key place. All the infrastructure is here. We have lots of room to expand. We just we just have to get more material, more gravel, make a road out of here. So, mark my words, in a few years this will be it. You know, federal government saying sovereignty, sovereignty. All we've been seeing is that over in the Eastern Arctic. What about the Western Arctic? We've been forgotten. This is where all the oil and gas is. You know, they want to bring in and get our, uh, uh, the oil and gas, and, but you know, they got to come to the table with something for the community and uh, hold them accountable. Yeah, it's not just going to come up here and take it. You know, it's our land now, so. Like I said to Merv, we're not going to move nowhere. You know, we're going to, born and raised in Tuck, and I'm not, uh, don't plan on moving anywhere, so. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, but I'm a, when it comes to my people, I'm a really aggressive, and I'll be pounding at that minister's door until I hear a yes, you know, and uh, to work, uh, to work with them to get all my issues that I have to get done up here. Because I feel like, you know, in the, in the past, I mean, we've been, I think we've been uh, bypassed a bit. Once serve our people, to, to, to help our people and to get ahead. Yeah, that's all we could ask for. And um, just try to provide everybody with the opportunity and give them a choice. We've been extremely busy uh, since October the 1st because that's what, uh, five months ago maybe, six months ago. And I think I've spent probably 75, 80% of my time in Yellowknife. Uh, maybe just because it was a new assembly and, and committees, everything just getting set up. We spent a lot of time there, really busy. And we're going to be like this right until probably the middle of June. I usually get here about 8 o'clock in the morning when I'm in town. First thing I usually do is come into the office, check the emails, respond to some of them. I mean, I worked the front lines for 23, 24 years, and we had to live with a lot of decisions made down here in Yellowknife. And you didn't always agree with the decisions that are made but you lived with them. But now I'm in a position where I'm part of the decision-making process and I don't always like what I see. I see where there's cuts made to the regions, but in headquarters, the money in the headquarters goes up by the same amount. I mean, what does that tell you? It just tells you that they're cutting programs and they're cutting money from the regional level and they're moving it to headquarters. You know, it's, it's not fair. So and that's one of the things that uh, I think I could do while I'm down here is, you know, I. I can be part of this decision-making process. If there's something that I don't like, then I can speak to it or see if there's anything I can do to change it. This year they're proposed to make reductions to some of the government workforce, but I'm not sure where their, their thinking is. Uh, you know, we, have, we just celebrated the 10th anniversary of the telehealth. The lady that's the telehealth coordinator, her position is one of the proposed elimination. So, <laughs> you got to kind of wonder where the thinking is and, and that's the two weeks that we have in April is where we can we can go down and state our case for some of the proposed reductions and we can make recommendations. 
And I believe that what we do as a team is invaluable. The people of the North deserve the best health care <coughs> that we can give them. And with telehealth, this offers a, a provides, it provides services and offers a means of communication out to all of our communities across great geographical distances. Thank you, uh, Victoria. I uh, have to admit I didn't know much about telehealth. So yesterday I came to the hospital and, and Victoria gave me a, an hour and a half briefing on the advantage of uh, telehealth. And, and not only did I, I realize then that it, it could be a potentially very useful tool in dealing with healthcare, especially in the remote areas. I also found someone that was very passionate about what they did. And that's the kind of uh, commitment that we have to encourage in the government and not be looking to, to move them along. So I commend you on, on 10 years and I look forward to 10 years from now. I may not be here to help you celebrate, but I'm going to do what I can to make sure Victoria is here doing this again in 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I enjoy about being an MLA is you get to go out and, and speak at these community functions and you meet people. So I had an opportunity to go over and speak to the students and I, I enjoy doing stuff like that, especially when it comes to the kids because, uh, you know, kids nowadays, they, they need uh, more people speaking to them and, uh, and you can be an encouragement to, to a lot of the kids. Before I start, I just want to ask you a question. How many of you in here have lost uh, someone that you know because of alcohol? You lost somebody you know because of alcohol. See, that, that's, that's quite a few. And so that, that's a good lesson to, to know that, uh, you know, the decisions that are made, uh, especially you as young people, can have serious consequences to those around you, uh, your friends and family. And, and I hope you use today as your opportunity to realize that there are serious consequences and you're all at an age right now where, you know, you start thinking about what you want to do, you start being with the, the wrong crowd, making the wrong decisions. The easiest thing you could possibly do it just go with the current, easiest thing. But I've got a lot of respect and admiration for kids that decide they're not going to go with the current. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean I have to. They'll swim against the current, and that takes a lot of guts. And I think you've all seen results of uh, alcohol and alcohol abuse and what it can do. I mean, I've known people that have gone to school with them, and I've lost quite a few friends. So I encourage you to take what you, you learned today, use it at home, tell your friends about it, and show a lot, of, uh, a lot of guts and just go against the current. Because everybody else is doing it, doesn't mean that you have to. And I hope you all learned a valuable lesson today. And, and I asked you the question before, and I thought it was important, because being in the small uh, town, small towns that we're all from, we've all been touched in one way or another. Um, because of alcohol and some of the accidents that are caused because of it. So I, I would encourage you to just go out there and make good quality choices because I, I envy you kids today. You're mostly in, in grade nine, I think. You got, you got the whole world ahead of you. There's so many opportunities that you kids have today that we didn't have when I was growing up. And, and uh, I encourage you to take advantage of them and, and make some good choices. And I thank Patricia again for this uh, opportunity to say a few words so so good luck with with whatever you decide to do in the future and like I said make good choices you'll never regret it thank you I think a lot of it is and I think what appealed to a lot of people that supported me in the last two elections is they feel I bring a lot of uh, common sense down to the assembly and and uh, looking at things like we said before from you know a practical point and trying to get my message across as practical as possible and as blunt as possible without uh, you know alienating myself from the other members and I think I've been successful in doing that so people have known me my whole life they they know my background 
they know what I've been through, they know where I've come from, and I think a lot of people have respect for, for the way that, uh, you know, we've turned it around, and, and, and I think that had a lot to do with, with my getting elected, and, and the people put a lot of faith in me, and it's much appreciated. And you're right, you know, you, when you build something, you see your results right away, and then you come down here, and it, it's kind of a slow process, and there just seems to be too much talk, and too much talk, and then, and then, then hopefully we have a little bit of action, and it is a slow process, but uh, we have a new assembly now, and you know we have a new assembly. Hopefully, we have a new attitude and, and a new government, new attitude, and start being proactive to the needs of the people in NWT instead of just reacting to it. You could never do anything like this without support of your family. Family being pretty supportive. I'm lucky. My children are all grown, and uh, actually, just my wife and I at home now. So, uh, the children are all grown. They're out of the house, and we've got the grandson now, and, and he takes up a lot of time, and, and it's good time. But uh, no, it is uh, it is it is a balance act. But we've been lucky that uh, our family's older, and, and you know they're not at home, so. So it doesn't affect me as more as it would affect uh, somebody with uh, young children and, and having to be away from them so much. I have uh, five children. I have um, my wife, Jenny, here with me. And uh, we uh, have four foster children as well, so I have nine children in total. So it was a big, uh, had to have a family meeting before being able to put my name forward, but I'm not planning to move them down to Yellowknife. And uh, just being away from my kids, you know, this next session is going to be for six weeks coming up in uh, May, May, June. So I think uh, that's going to be a real test because I've been, the longest I've been gone has been about three weeks. I do a lot of work out of my, my home, so I'm around my children and uh, it just uh, uh, gets me ready, you know, to head back down to Yellowknife and, and uh, don the suit, I guess, and then go forward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really proud of, you know, I'm proud of my people because we're always leading the way. And as in the Valley with people as a whole, we lead the way and everybody follows. So now I'm trying to take that work ethic that I did prior for myself being the mayor, I'm trying to take that work ethic and put it as in my job as MLA. I'm trying to lead the way in regards to you know, getting people behind me to get my stuff done and working with them. So. It's just, uh, how are you today? You know, it's just, how are you doing? So, and then, and uh, it's not only, it's not all business. Like I said, I got good friends. They're, uh, you know, they're my friends too. And you try to work together, and give and take. And if it's not, that we bring it to the floor of the house and then we vote on it. So it's just uh, supporting each other to get the job done. We all want the best for the people of our of our ridings and the best for the people of the Northwest Territories as a whole.